So there I was, playing a completely normal Elite Dangerous playthrough, when suddenly... Oh frick, no, oh no. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask to permission to board. Can we leave, please? Hello? What, in, why are we not moving? Let me out of... You know what? Screw that place. But after I cooled my head a bit and tried docking again... You know what? I'm not even... I'm not even slowing down. Screw you. Maybe I am slowing down a little bit. Oh gosh. Okay, I made a mistake. <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> I had indeed made a mistake. But my troubles are only just getting started. <laughs> this is not my day! What the- Yeah. <laughs> this is so- <laughs> Everything is going wrong that could possibly go wrong. Oh my gosh. This is the worst. I mean, everything that went wrong was technically 100% my fault. So I decided to give them a second chance and actually try docking with them. And we're just going to go into the station, pay our yeah. thing fine. I know you're scanning me. I get it. Jerks. You think they're going to torment you? You think you're going to, you're going to, taunt me be like oh you're gonna scan you 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 have anything illegal you oh you might have some contraband no don't have anything contraband just a yeah. 400 credit fine i had successfully docked but by this point i'd had enough of these space stations and their rules so i made up my mind <laughs> this is literally the worst i just want to go on my, i just want to explore you know what Screw you, I am not, I'm not docking anymore. We are never coming back to a station. I'm gonna be a completely space neko. And so it began. Bringing nothing but my Diamondback Scout and my hatred of space station rules, I began my journey into the stars. Don't try this at home, kids. Oh gosh. For my first destination, I chose a nebula outside of colonized space, but still somewhat nearby. A beautiful collection of space dust known as the California Nebula. I quickly exited the bubble, and then I truly was on my own. All right, well, we're on our own. The stars I jumped to no longer had nav beacons, and signal sources, contacts, and even stations disappeared as well. I was on the frontier, the edge of known space. Stars unexplored and unknown to those in the bubble. Well, they were probably technically explored, being so close to the bubble, and being on the way to what I assume is probably a pretty popular tourist attraction. But they were new to me, okay? At this point, I had had a bad stretch of no fuel stars for a few jumps in a row, and my fuel was getting low. So 14 jumps into the journey, I decided to take a quick detour to fuel up using my fuel scoop. Before long, my fuel tank was filled up, and I can continue on my journey. The stars began to blend together. They do all look pretty similar, after all. Balls of fire in the sky, or space, I guess, of varying colors and sizes. With the monotony of space travel becoming increasingly obvious with each jump, I decided to take another detour and try exploring a planet's surface. It was just a random planet, nothing too special other than being in the same system as me. As I approached, I found a large crater and decided it would be a cool place to land. Turns out, it was a really cool place to land. We're gonna land in this little cove. Oh, this is so cool. I touched down and after checking the controls, started navigating on the surface using my SRV. After getting used to the controls and learning how to use the scanner, I found some ore that I could collect. It took a few tries to pick it all up, but eventually I got it all. Apparently I can use this to upgrade my ship. With the planetary expedition finished, I recalled my ship, and after taking a literal eternity trying to board it, I finally made it and was able to continue my venture through space. After all the exploring I did on the surface of the planet, flying through space and doing frameshift jumps was actually somewhat novel again. But the novelty quickly faded away as the jumps once again started piling up. Before long, I decided to try out the FSS scanner and fully scanned my first system. None of the planets looked too interesting though, so I just continued on my journey. After a little while longer, the nebula finally started coming into view. I knocked out the rest of the jumps and we were there. Actually, there were a few more jumps first. Then we were actually there, the California Nebula. After having a little fun gazing at the nebula, I landed on a planetary settlement in this sector. When I finally touched down, a wave of relief washed over me. I was outside the bubble, hundreds of light years from home, yet here I was, docking on a landing pad in who knows how long. My home research space welcomed me, and there I sold my cartographic data before perusing their surprisingly well-stocked array of outfitting options. 
There I bought mining equipment, so I could do some deep space mining, then headed to the ring of a nearby star to test it out, before embarking for another big journey. I mined a couple indite, not too valuable, but it was good proof of concept. And when I say a couple, I mean it. Just two. My cargo capacity at this point is pitifully small. With the mining test complete, I left the asteroid belt, once again landed at the station, and logged off for the day. When I next logged in, I went mining for a little bit to start, but once again came up dry, only obtaining some pretty valueless ores. I decided after that to explore the California Nebula a little more, since I came all this way and all. I mapped out one of the systems, then docked at a nearby station. There, I bought a Sidewinder, my hope being that I could just leave it there, and if I died, I would have a respawn point out here to jumpstart any future adventures in this region. Next, I upgraded my refinery and got some more cargo space, then put them straight to use by mining a bit in the same system. As my cargo bay was still moderately small, the mining was quickly over with. This time I gathered some Samarium, also known as Samarium, which would sell for a good amount at the next station, which I soon docked at, sold my ore, and headed out for another adventure, for real this time. I plotted my route and left the station to see a beautiful planet illuminated by a nearby star right next to the nebula. And before long, I was off, once again jumping from star to star, now on my way to the aptly named NGC 7822 nebula. NGC 7822 nebula? Wow, what a creative name, I want to visit you just for that. I soon found a system with an ice ring planet, and decided to scan it to try and go for some higher value ores. It wasn't what I was looking for, but I did find some tritium, and at 50,000 each, I had just made a quick 100k with this little pit stop. After a few more jumps, I realized that this trip was really taking a while, so I rerouted to the closer but still really far away cave nebula. A few jumps later, and I was there! And by there, I mean a planet nowhere near the cave nebula that I landed on before logging off for the day. Ah! Ah! No! When I next logged in at a turn night on Sinwefa WC-VC5-62C, I confirmed my route then blasted off from the planet, when not a few jumps later I found a water planet. Oh, water world! Today I had decided to learn the detailed surface scanner, so I flew over and scanned the whole planet. The excitement was quickly over though, and I was back to jumping, flying across the interstellar interstate. My next stop was a random asteroid clump I found, where I did some mining and obtained a samarium and a praseodymium. Nice. Next I found a water planet on the system scanner, so I got up close and started scanning it. I was scanning these to hopefully raise enough funds to afford the upgraded version of my current exploration vessel, the Diamondback Explorer. As I approached the cave nebula, I was scanning the system as usual, and found something called a notable stellar phenomenon. When I went up to it, I found this crazy spiky thing sitting out in the middle of space. I scanned to reveal they were prasinum metallic crystals. Nearby was another one, this time a flavum metallic crystal. Sounds yummy! I didn't try to eat it though, and seeing that seemed to be all there was here, I moved on to the other stellar phenomenon in the system. When I got there I saw an amber colored cloud of space mist. Only when I got closer, I realized there were hundreds of the spiky space things. Whoa, there's like so many of them! This is crazy. I spent a little bit of time enjoying the scenery before moving on to the next jump. Wow, that really was notable. By this point I was nearing the cave nebula, and it was becoming more and more visible with each passing jump. We were there! Cave Sector FB-XC1-7. The nebula enveloped us like, well, a cave. I decided to celebrate reaching my goal by doing some mining in the rings of a planet in this system. I scanned the ring to find a Serendibite hotspot. Of course, I wasn't actually able to find any. I had a cool view of the nebula from here though, so it wasn't a complete waste. Next I plotted a course to my final destination for this trip, the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. And before long, we had it in our sights. This one really is aptly named. Hmm, maybe it looks that way from the other side. I found an asteroid station in the ring of this really cool planet, docked there, and logged off for the day. When I next logged in, my first order of business was to buy a ship here, so I could have another location to potentially teleport to, if my prior hypothesis was correct. The station I was docked at had no shipyard, so I decided to try one of the planetary settlements to check if they had one. As I approached, the settlement seemed to be obscured by something. Wait, what's it on the other side of? Why is it not... Also, I can't see anything. Oh my goodness! Oh my- No! No! What? What do we hit? No! I couldn't see anything! Your ship has been destroyed. I can see that! So with that plan out of the window, I decided to just plot a route back home. With 133 jumps to get there, all I had to do was get going and start jumping. A few jumps in, I had mastered the art of the jump. 
and managed to jump directly out of the game. What? It was a really long jump segment. I had to break it up somehow. And wait, oh wait, what's this? A wild North America nebula? Yeah, I took a bit of a detour. It was on the way, so. It looks like a dragon though, which is pretty cool. This is probably the coolest nebula I've seen so far. And I figured while I was already taking the detours, I'd check out another nebula on the way back to the bubble. Behold, the Saturn Nebula. To be honest, this one is aptly named too, because it looks sadder than the previous ones. Next, I checked the stations in this sector to see if any of them had a shipyard. But before I could finish... Unless... <gasps> Please, no, ah, why are we getting it? What? Your mind now? Wait, why are we getting interdicted? There's nobody here. Why would this even happen? Who wants? I have no cargo. Why would you even want to do this? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Let me go. Ah! Jerk. Baka. I finally reached the station, but upon landing, I found there was no shipyard. This made me even sadder. You know what? I'm done with this place. I'm going home for real this time. But first I had to see this cool nebula on the way there. Behold, I unveil to you the Veil Nebula. This one I can actually kind of see why it's named that. Pretty neat. Okay, that was really my last stop this time. I warped from star to star on the way back, scanned systems, and did that over and over until I made it back home to make Monogal Station. There I bought a Diamondback Explorer, a worthy upgrade earned from all the exploration data I'd sold. After outfitting a bit, I tested mining in the ring of a planet in a nearby sector. I had purchased a new scanner that showed valuable asteroids, and by focusing those, I got a moderately decent haul this time. After that, I headed to a nearby station, sold my ores, and finally concluded my grand adventure. My first time delving into exploration was so much fun. I found so many cool nebulas, stellar phenomena, planets, and so much more. This was, however, only my first journey, and as such, it was not as ambitious as a longer expedition might be. But I learned a lot, earned a lot, and now I'm equipped to take on an even bigger mission. Next time, I'm pulling out all the stops.